Back in high school, I took a mysteries and mythology type class, or something like that. I don't remember the name of the class. It basically just had to do with real life mysteries and creepy shit. I was into that kind of stuff. I was taking the class with a good friend, who I'll call Ben for this story. The teacher of the class took us on a field trip to a nearby abandoned village with an unknown past. The village was built in the early 1900s, but seems as though it had been quickly abandoned shortly after it was built. The bus ride there was about 20 minutes. All of us were glued to the bus windows as we pulled up some sketchy looking, decrepit road cutting through dense forest. The road eventually led to a clearing. We were there. We stepped out onto the road which had grass growing through the cracks. The grass surrounding was almost knee high. Then there were the buildings. The tall, archaic brick buildings with the boarded up windows all gave off such chilling vibes. The teacher lined all 20 of us up, counted heads, and then began leading the way. The point of this little field trip was to use the so-called skills we learned in class to see if we could put anything together about why the village may have been abandoned so long ago. Some of the buildings had holes in the walls to serve as entryways. There were even holes in the ground next to some of the buildings, seemingly dug to get into the basements of some of the buildings, which seemed creepy. There was one building though, it stood taller than any of the others. It just intrigued me the most. While the teacher was leading the group towards the village church, Ben and I decided to sneak off on our own to look for anything interesting. When we walked off in the direction of the tallest building, we saw a hole in the grounds. It was dug by the back door of the building, which had been sealed off. In the hole was a ladder, which led down to the concrete floor below. We both looked at each other and knew we had to do it. Ben climbed down first, then me. Luckily, this was just around the time Apple started putting flashlights on their phones, so we had a source of light. It was creepy down there. There were a couple of beer bottles, one graffiti tag on the wall, and dusty wooden planks everywhere. There was a wooden stairway which led up to complete darkness, since all windows and doors had been sealed shut from above. We had already gone as far as to enter the building, so we figured we'd go up the stairs too. I went first, and with each step, the creakiness of the hundred-year-old wood made me feel as if I was going to fall through each and every step. Ben followed suit. This floor of the building was very tight. It seemed like there were many openings going off into different, smaller rooms. It was so dark in there you would never even guess it was daytime. Ben and I were honestly starting to get creeped out in there, and agreed to go back outside. But just then, there was a noise in one of the tiny rooms. Like a big rock hitting the concrete floor. A normal instinct would be to run, but Ben and I froze, locked eyes for a moment, then both tiptoed over to the opening of the room. We shined the lights into the room, and ran. We ran back down the stairs and then up the rusty ladder back outside. We caught up to the group out of breath. We didn't say anything though to avoid getting in trouble. One of our classmates asked us what was wrong. We told him we snuck into one of the buildings, and in one of the rooms, when we shined the light into it, we saw three guys standing maybe ten feet away from the doorway, facing Ben and I in a weird formation as if they were waiting for us. As we continued following the group, we paid extra attention to the tall building we entered from the distance. And before leaving, we saw a person's face at one of the higher level windows that had not been boarded up. We never told the teacher in fear of getting in trouble. We didn't know what to think. Were those just homeless people living in there? Were they gang members in hiding? Ben freaks me out with his theory. He says they were ghosts of the people who once lived in the town. Still, the way the three guys were just hauntingly standing there so calmly, staring at us the moment we peeked our heads through that doorway, I still can't get that image out of my head. I may go back to that village one day, 
just to prove Ben's idea wrong. 